Murder at Castle Nathria is finally here, and with it comes a ton of new cards and archetypes. So in this video, I theorycrafted 10 brand new decks, one for each class, that are ready to use for you on day one of the new expansion. Hey guys, I'm Funky Monkey, your off-meta deck builder, and in this video, we're gonna be going over 10 brand new decks, one for each class that you can use for day one of the new expansion. Now, all the decks you're about to see, I tried to make them as different and unique as I could while including as many of the new cards while still keeping them competitively viable. I do this kind of video for every expansion and frequently the decks that are in these videos do become meta. So I think you guys are absolutely gonna love the decks you're about to see. And all I do is deck build on this channel and I only make my own decks and I've promised to never net deck. So if you wanna see the most unique, creative, fun, off meta decks for the new expansion then consider subscribing it's free and you can always change your mind later but without further ado let's hop into the decks all right so first off we have the skeleton mage featuring the new kalthuzad so with this deck we're just going to be summoning a ton of skeletons using the new cold case and the deathborn card as well as the new location the night cloak sanctum we can even get back more of these skeleton cards with like commander savara or we can replay them with the dawn grasp and then when we've played a ton of skeletons we can go ahead and just slam down our kalthuzad and make a big board and do a ton of damage with him and even better yet we have the double kalthuzad combo so we can go kalthos play bran and then play kalthuzad for zero mana and then we get double Kel'Thuzad and then just for a little bit more lethality and to make the deck more consistent we're running a hero power package in here with wildfire reckless apprentice and mordresh so in case our Kel'Thuzad doesn't finish them off we can always polish them off with like a mordresh or double mordresh all right next up on our list is going to be this enraged warrior so we got a lot of really cool new tools for this deck that'll finally maybe make it viable so there's just a ton of synergy in this deck we have cards that want to be damaged like the new animal extractor to buff your hand like frothing berserker so we can get more damage we have the new olgra too which wants damaged things on the board or even like the warsong envoy and then we can even take advantage of all these damaged minions with the new imbued axe so every time we attack we buff up all of our damaged minions and then we have ways of damaging our own minions using the new location sanguine depths riot which is awesome because it allows you to board clear and push face damage all at once and also we have the whirling combatant as well we even have a really cool top end card too to help us finish games and that's remornia so if remornia gets buffed with the animal extractor it can just be massive and then every time you attack with it you get it as a weapon and then you can swing face with that weapon get it as a minion again and just keep repeating back and forth yeah, this one I'm probably looking forward to the most in the new expansion, so I hope it's viable, but it looks good on paper. The third deck up is going to be this Shadow Thief Priest. And this archetype also got a ton of new support cards. So we can copy a bunch of cards from our opponent using like the new Identity Theft, Murloc Holmes, or like the new Theotar. And then we can discount all those copied cards using the Mysterious Visitor. And if we play those cards with Harvester of Envy, we get to steal our opponent's original copies of it. So not only are you just generating a ton of value with this deck, but you can actually disrupt your opponent too by stealing their stuff. We also do have the wombo combo of playing Cathedral of Anointment into Partner in Crime, in the turn three into turn four, because that allows you to get two, four, six minions by turn four. So that combo is just pretty good. You probably want to run it in every priest deck. Yeah, this deck is super annoying to play against, so I can't wait to get my hands on it and just annoy everybody on ladder. The next deck up, we have Imp Lock. They're pushing a ton of support for this, so I know a lot of you guys are looking forward to some Imp Lock. I had the pleasure of playing this for an early access theory crafting event, and it felt really strong. So we want to play this like an aggro deck, just flood the board with as many early costed imps and minions as possible. We can just draw a million cards with impending catastrophe or buff up a minion by like plus seven plus seven with the new location, Vile Library. We even have some pretty cool combos in here too. So like if we have any imps on the board, we can use the Vile Location buff and play that on some Muro for a board clear. We can also buff our imps with the Shady Bartender or polish them off with like the Imp King Rafam. Yeah, I think Imp Lock is looking pretty legit this expansion and it looks pretty impressive. All right, so our fifth, sixth, fourth deck up is gonna be this big Druid. So this deck has some really massive Wombo combos to it. So we wanna set up our big Death Rattle stuff using the new Hedge Mage location. And then we just wanna ramp, 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 ramp up to getting to our Death Blossom Womper. And it's guaranteed to either get the Cecily Death Rattle or the Stoneborn General Death Rattle. And then we can activate them on the same turn using the new Hedge Maze. So like the ideal curve would be like ramping on turn four, turn five, you play the Death Blossom Womper and you get the General Death Rattle and then you activate that right away. 
So you get a 7-6 death rattle and you also get an 8-8 rush on turn five. We also can do some cool stuff if we get like the Cecily death rattle. So if we activate that, we can get like a two mana Neptalon, a two mana raid boss and Nixia. And if those massive power spikes in the mid game don't end the game, well, we can always polish them off with the Convoke the Spirits and that'll always surely give us lethal, right? Right? All right, the next deck that we have is going to be this Fell Relic Demon Hunter. So the relics by themselves are not that powerful. They almost seem like more support cards. So they're going to help us draw through a deck like crazy using the Relic of Dimensions and help us fight for a board a little bit to survive using the Relic of Extinction. So that way we can do what Fell Demon Hunter does best. And that way we can just go face with all of our Fell spells and polish them off with the Jace. And one really cool thing is that if we play Zaleg on turn seven and everything dies, it automatically and fuses our Zymox, so he's ready on turn eight. Yeah, this deck is really cool. We can play offensively, we can play defensively. We gotta do a lot of mana cheating and a lot of face damage, and it just feels like a very demon hunter-y kind of deck. All right, so our seventh deck on the list here is gonna be this Totem Shaman. I've always been a big Totem Shaman fan, so hopefully it can finally be viable because we got a lot of new support cards for this. So we have the new legendary, the Stone Rate, where when you play it, it gets plus two attack for all your totems for the rest of the game. So if you can play this early, like on curve on turn four, that's just pretty much game winning. You can get just milk so much value throughout the game. But naturally totems just want to go wide and we're going to be summoning a ton of them, especially with the new party favor totem, where we're going to be summoning two at the end of every turn or like the carving chisel, which summons three totems total over three turns. So we can take advantage of the famished fool. A lot of them are going to be dying, so we can get some really good card draw that way. And if we have a wide board stick, we can polish them off with a bloodlust or we can even slam down a really cheap seed giant. And because we're summoning so many totems, we can get our Gigantotems discounted to pretty cheap very quickly as well. Like, you can play these for zero mana on turn five. And if all else fails, we always have the good old reliable Snowfall Guardian in the Parrot Wind condition. Because if we don't have our Stone Right card, then we're just going to be summoning a bunch of zero attack totems on our board, which do nothing. So we can actually utilize those with our Snowfall Guardian so we can make a massive Guardian and hopefully win that way. Yeah, there's just a lot of different ways you can win with this deck here. So hopefully it's good, but I think it'll be a ton of fun. So the next deck that we have is going to be this Dude Quest Paladin. Is it finally Dude Paladin's time to shine? We'll see. But it got a few new cards which seem perfect for the deck. So we got the new Sinful Suit Chef which is basically three quest progressions and one card. We also have promotion, which is amazing stats on any dude that we have, which is pretty easy to do. We're always summoning dudes. And because we're summoning so many dudes throughout the game, we can take advantage of the buffet biggin to summon just a massive amount of stats. And after the quest is completed, the biggin summons two five, three divine shields. That's insane. And when all of our dudes start dying, we can get some massive card draw with the new Famished Fool. To help buff our dudes up, we even have the Great Hall card. And this is pretty versatile too. Like if we want to get through like a big taunt minion, we can shrink the taunt minion with the Great Hall because we can also use it on allies or enemies. Or we can just take like a 1-1 one, one dude and buff it up to be a 3-3. Three, three. And then for some massive value, we are running the new legendary Steward of the Steward because we're summoning a ton of dudes. So this guy can just summon a lot of stats throughout the whole game. Yeah, this deck might finally be the one that gets Dude Paladin to be viable. This next deck up is going to be scary. It's going to be a Miracle Rogue featuring the Necro Lord Draka. This deck I actually played against during the theory crafting streams and I was getting OTK'd by like turn six. So this might actually be a nerf candidate for a deck. So how it works, it's a combo deck. So you just want to be assembling a, like an OTK combo, if you will. You want to be getting a bunch of coins in your hand using the Lone Shark and using the sketched information. And then you play your Gedgeton Auctioneer and then you play all your coins with the Lone Shark to just draw a bunch through your deck, play all your cheap spells. And then at the end of your turn, you want to play the Necro Lord Draka. And oftentimes you get like a 30 attack weapon for an OTK with the Draka because you played so many coins and cards. We can also discount cards in our hand for an earlier OTK using the efficient Octobot. And if all else fails, if like the weapon gets removed or if the Draka weapon isn't big enough, we always have our Sinstone Graveyard to make some massive stealth dudes as well and win that way. But yeah, this is one of those like non-interactive, unfun decks to play against. I mean, it's super fun to play, but not very fun to play against. So we'll see if this deck ends up being too good where it gets nerfed. But until then, we can have some fun with it, right? And the last deck, but certainly not least, is going to be this Wild Seed Hunter. This is a brand new archetype featuring all the new Wild Seed cards. So this deck is all about board control. So we want to start out with a very early game using some sticky minions like Batty Guest or Click Clocker. 
so we can buff them up on turn two using like the doggy biscuit or even the new castle kennels and then from there we just want to be just curving out and battling for the board we want to play our wild seeds on turn three maybe even like buff one of them up with a ramming charge and trade because we can control the board super easily with this deck which means that we get to keep going face and once we're ahead on the board once we can keep going face we have some really cool finishers like we have the twin bow terra coil so we can double up like a piercing shot for a ton of damage we can even double up like our wild seed cards too if you want to for more board and we can also polish them off with the new huntsman altimore and we summon a bunch of animal companions and we just win with huffer well, that's going to wrap up all my theorycraft decks that I have for you guys ready to use for day one of Murder at Castle Nathria expansion. Now, I want to hear from you guys. Let me know down below in the comments section, which deck are you looking forward to playing the most for the new expansion? I hope these decks were able to give you some inspiration or some help to get you started on the new expansion. And if any of these decks were interesting or helpful to you, then let me know by leaving a like on the video. All these decks took me a long time to refine, so that helps me out a ton. And don't forget to subscribe so you can see all these cool decks and other off-meta decks like these for the new expansion. But I'll see you guys at Castle Nathria.